So welcome back to another coffee morning vlog. Why don't you just start from the beginning? Make sure that the person that you want to get into a relationship with, the person that you want to marry, the, per the person that you want to become friends with, like make sure that you, you that there is a common denominator, that you guys have things in common, that you know there is mutual respect. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, my name is Ellie Arquette. I am a psychic medium, spiritual therapist, life coach, and founder of Ellie Arquette Cosmetics. All the makeup that you guys always see in my videos is going to be listed in the description box down below. I have my own vegan, organic, cruelty-free makeup and skincare. If you guys are interested in having clean, organic products that are good for your skin, check it out by, I'll put the link here, lyarkitshop.com. If you guys wanna to come to me for anything spiritual, like coaching, healing, readings, go to lyarkit.com slash services. I hope you guys give this video a like before we start. And if you guys like content like this, consider subscribing and let's get into it. So, the, so today's topic is about when you <laughs> marry down. Um, I understand that we all have the freedom and we all have the right to fall in love with whomever, right? And it has happened historically speaking. And even if we look at the royal family, within the royal family, not just long ago, not that long ago, you know, Harry married a commoner, William married a commoner. I mean, Princess Catherine comes from an aristocratic, very educated family. Um, Diana was Lady Diana. She came from an aristocratic uh, family and also she had like a royal blood, but like, queen's uh uncle left the kingdom so it's like it's not that far um it's not that far off historically speaking that people who have done that and this notion of like i'm so in love that i'm going to give up my kingdom i'm so in love that i'm going to give up my family i'm going to give up my morals and and values and just follow this person i think like when we look at people like harry and megan right now as an example i don't want to just focus on them but when we look at them as an example, it kind of shows like how it just doesn't work. And I think like when I first came to Hollywood, I was so young and like impressionable, right? And I also uh, believed in that narrative of like, you know, love is love and love is love. Love is love. It's not true. Love is not love. And and the problem with, with, with that is when you marry the wrong person, the implications of that and what happens to your life later on. Um, I have made the same mistake. I mean, I always speak from experience. I always talk about my personal experiences because as a as a spiritual therapist, as a, a life coach, I always share my experiences with my clients because I think it's important that if I'm teaching something and if I'm helping someone that they understand that I've gone through it and I understand it. But what happens when you marry down is, as an example again, we can look at um, Harry and Meghan. So Prince Harry comes from this royal royalty. All he's ever known was to be a prince. His grandmother is the queen of England. His father is now the king and his brother and sister-in-law are in line to the throne. And what does he do? He picks with all the women that were available to him, with all the women that he's dated that were of that aristocratic background in England. What does he do? He chooses Meghan Markle. Um, and I just, wanted, I just wanna talk about how like, you know, infatuations or sexual gratification doesn't mean that you have to sign a contract and get married to that person. A lot of times I think that we fall victim to our emotion and our emotion dictates to us like, oh, this is a person I wanna be with because I'm attracted to them because I wanna have sex with them, right? And then, and then you destroy your whole life. You destroy your life because you chose wrongly. When you marry down, when you come from a specific type of family, like let's say you are, you come from a family of conservatives, they're Republicans, they're all educated, they're all, you know, they do well and they have businesses and they're successful. And then someone in the family marries a, a, a liberal Democrat, um, with a poor family, uh, they they don't have formal education. They don't understand uh, they don't understand rules and, and 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 tradition, right? They don't respect it. 
they just believe in like, oh, I'm free and I'm free. I just want to be free and I'm just like a freedom and freedom and I can just do whatever I want. I'm free and free. Um, so then you bring somebody like that into the family. Obviously, it's going to create chaos. Obviously, it's going to create a discord because you were raised in a specific type of family and now you're bringing a completely uh you, you're bringing someone that's like does not match into the family structure and it becomes a denominator for all the chaos that will about to happen and it eventually will, will happen because there will be clashes why culturally financially spiritually you know like if family goes to church this family uh drinks and does drugs it's just fundamentally wrong and i think like now that i'm like a grown-ass person you know when i was younger like i didn't understand that like i didn't really understand all of these like when i was younger and i got into relationships uh, for merely for the pleasure of it and i didn't really think about the implications of what it would do and like how i allow someone that's uh, like beneath me uh you know socially financially spiritually literally beneath me and i and i had the sense of like this empathetic comp compassionate like feeling of like i'm going to save them and i'm going to help them and i'm going to bring them up it's not my job to do that and i have done that and and it blew up in my face because at the end of the day per the person becomes resentful because they don't because they find you restrictive they don't like your culture they don't like the rules and they don't want they don't want to have anything to do with it and then eventually it's going to explode so how do i feel about like an Asian person marrying a black person or a black person marrying a white person. Of course that happens in our society. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have like, I don't have a problem with like interracial marriages, but fundamentally it, it will create discord and, and, and drama in the family. So when you marry down, um, now let's say like you are a, 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 like I'm going to Harvard, right? So let's say, I'm going to Harvard and I'm trying to get my master's in psychology and I own my own business and I'm going to school and I'm paying for everything and I come from a, uh, an educated family and then I because my last relationship was literally shit like literally shit which I'll get to get into right now in a second um let's say that in the future I'm going to meet somebody and this person doesn't have formal education they don't have their own business they work for somebody uh they're not really responsible they're not really clean they're not efficient they're not punctual and uh, but like i'm attracted to them and therefore i want to have sex with them so therefore i get into a relationship with them and bringing this person to my family bringing this person into my life where i have certain set of values i believe in commitment i believe in monogamy i, I believe in um you know uh respect and, and respecting someone's tradition and 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 um and uh, way of things and the way you know their, their culture is different or whatever how is that going to play out in my life it's not going to play out very well so the mistake that i made in this recent relationship which is what i'm going about uh, what i'm about to talk about is that i met someone when i was at my lowest six years ago my brother my 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 big brother committed suicide he um had issues with his mental health he was addicted to 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 alcohol and he was suffering greatly with his uh health because of it and um one day he got drunk uh, drinking two bottles of tequila on an empty stomach we still really don't know what happened because his wife could have something to do with it i don't know and he did that so when that happened obviously it completely destroyed my family we were all distraught devastated traumatized and i was mourning and i had never ever seen a dead body i never we, we've never had a death in our family that was close to me and i had to and i went to his you know wake obviously i wasn't even able to go, go to his funeral because as an empath as a psychic empath as a medium i can't i can't go to church when there's a lot of people i can't go to funerals it just it's devastating for me and it's really traumatizing for me and i can't handle that that kind of energy that sadness it like really affects me so when i went to his wake though and i saw her dead his dead body it was just like this moment of like realization like oh my god like my brother is dead and this is what happens like eventually we're going to die one day and i just like lost it right i lost it and i just was so low vibrational i was so unhappy i was so depressed i was so sad i felt lost nothing meant anything to me and i became really really um became really really reckless because i was really reckless and i was just 
dating around and I wanted like, you know, gratification right away. I got on a dating app. Okay, nobody really knows the whole story about how I met this person. I got on a dating app and I was swiping and I was on Tinder and I met this person and we swiped and we talked and stuff and then I was just like, oh my God, you know, we have a lot in common and stuff and he came across because he's a, he's, this person that I was with was a, a, a covert narcissist, a, a, a uh, um, very, very emotionally manipulative, a very, very sneaky, uh, deceptive, lied all the time. Um, and so I met him and I was like, oh my God, he's so beautiful and attractive. He's so my type and he's so nice. And, and we hit it off and we started dating and immediately got into a relationship. We immediately uh, consummated the, the relationship, like the second date. And then I just fell into this darkness with him. He was addicted to drugs. I didn't know about it. He got arrested in front of me. The police officers came to me and they were like, he lies to the police. We don't recommend you, you know, continuing this relationship with him because he lies to the police. He's a liar. He, he's a user. He sells and uses meth. And I was just like, no, this can't be my person. He's beautiful and he's clean and he showers and he, he showers me with gifts and he buys me everything that I want. And he's like so nice to me. And they were like, yeah, he's not the person that you think he is. So, so many things, I don't want to go into the whole thing in depth, but so many things happened in this relationship where I felt as a person, because I had just lost my brother, that I felt this need to like save him. Now, he came from a poor family. His mother was an alcoholic. His father was an alcoholic, drug addict. His, whole, his brother was a homeless person on drugs in the city where he grew up. His grandparents were drug addicts like his whole family were like poor drug addict alcoholics now I didn't want to pass judgment on that because my brother was an alcoholic do you guys understand my brother was suffering from like mental health issues and alcoholism so I, I didn't want to like you know um hold that against him right and I wanted to save him and I want to I wanted to help him but like my brother was an engineer he was like an educated person my family everyone's educated they're all successful financially so it just it was the wrong decision and I wasted my life for six years. I literally wasted my life for six years because I was marrying down. Do you guys, do you, guys you know, you understand what I'm saying? Even if we were not formally married, it was a form of relationship marriage because you're living with somebody for six years. So it was like a marriage and I married down. I got with someone who didn't appreciate who didn't respect my culture he didn't respect who i was he didn't have any rules he grew up just like nobody cared about him nobody taught him anything from nobody taught him right from wrong and he just was like he just grew up using drugs and drinking and just kind of lying and cheating and 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 being deceitful and narcissism is narcissism forms at a young age because especially when you're in a household where you're not getting any attention. You don't have any structure. Fundamentally, there is no one there to really that cares about you. And everyone actually wants something from you. So then that's where narcissism actually starts. To, it's like, a, it's like, it's demonic. It kind of like you know, invades you, invades your psyche. This narcissism personality disorder gets formed, right? And then it becomes a part of who you are, which is you're a type of person that lies. You're deceitful. You're neglectful. You, um, uh, lack empathy, you lack shame, you lack responsibility, you lack um, humanity, and it's just all about what can I get at this moment. He was using me, he was using this gay guy, it was just like, it was fucking crazy. And But I have to say, from this experience, it, it made me want to um, become this life coach that I am. It made me want to become this, you know, spiritual therapist that I am. It made me want to um, start you know, giving readings and, and helping people spiritually. And I started my businesses because I saw that all the time and effort and energy that I put into this person was useless. So I turned the attention the last year or two of the relationship onto myself. And I was like, okay, this is, this is wrong. I should not be with this person. This is not going to go anywhere. He cons consistently lies and cheats and, and, um, there's no, there's no, um, sense of, uh, uh, empathy uh, he doesn't have guilt he doesn't have remorse he doesn't think there's anything wrong with him everything everything is wrong with me there's nothing wrong with him and he was abusive to me physically he was abusive to me emotionally he was abusive to me financially he was so abusive to me and he put me in he isolated me I lost so many of my friends 
and he pulled me away from something that I loved so much, which was acting. And I was just with him all the time. He paid for everything, so then I became dependent on him financially. So when he would get mad, he would take my car keys away because you know I was driving his car and I sold my car because he was like what do you need a car for just sell it you can just drive mine and then when I did so he would complain about me like driving his car for two seconds to go to the grocery store to pick up milk to come home so we can have coffee and it was like a form of abuse the abuse was like I'm gonna control you you're gonna be dependent on me and then you're gonna have to like listen to everything I say and like abide by my rule even though he was living in my home fully furnished, everything available. So the reason I always talk about my personal experience is because it's important for people to understand that it's not just you, it happens to everybody. These type of people that come in and, and use and abuse and manipulate are very, very good at it. This is what, this is how they survive. This is their survival like mechanism. And when you choose the wrong person in your life, whether you're dating, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, whether you're getting married to this person if you marry down meaning like if this person is not up if this person is not on the same level as you financially culturally um morally intellectually financially if you guys don't have the same education if you guys don't come from the similar families if you guys don't come from similar backgrounds if you guys don't have the same if you guys don't think ha have things in common even even as as superficial as liking the same type of music if you guys don't have that in common after some time when the sex fizzles or you know it's no longer that excitement of being with this person you're gonna have to face the truth about who you're with again in relationships friendships you know the type of uh, job you want to you want to get into the type of education that you, that you want to pursue where it's going to put you in a type of a position and a job later on in life you have to really think about those things because when you marry the wrong person when you when you engage with their becoming friends with the wrong person when you do all these things it affects your life and it turns your life upside down and I just want to help people with all my experiences because I know not a lot of people can afford to come to me on a one-on-one -on -one coaching session and aside from manifestation and law of attraction and law of assumption and how to turn your life around you know with quantum physics and, and learning how to manipulate energy aside from all of that why don't you just start it why don't you just start the right way why don't you just start from the beginning make sure that the person that you want to get into a relationship with the person that you want to marry the, per the person that you want to become friends with like make sure that you, you that there is a common denominator that you guys have things in common that you know there is mutual respect there is mutual love there is mutual respect of your your culture you know, like i am persian and turkish and you know i come from a, a very educated family everyone in my family they're doctors and engineers and brain surgeons and you know my dad is a, a retired diplomat a naval officer he was an admiral and my mother was like a principal and so it's you know i can never i can i can never ever ever see myself being in a relationship with someone that is not going to be vibrationally the same frequency as me you know similar background and maybe the only thing that i felt like i it, i connected with this person uh was that my my brother was an alcoholic and he killed himself and like your brother is a drug addict homeless in the streets Maybe that was a common denominator for us, but I'm just telling you guys that when you marry down, this is where all the problems start. Like we have to kind of wake up to that in our society and pick ch and pick and choose wisely. The right type of friends, the right school to go to, the right job to get into. You know, even if there's family members that are toxic, if, even there, if there are people that are close to you that are toxic, that maybe you should no longer like associate with and like remove yourself from. All these things are very, very important to your mental health, to the success of your life. And you have to be really, really conscious of that. And not just, you know, take the liberal democratic point of view that love is love. Love is love. No, love is not love. You have to be more, you have to be smart about it. Uh, so in the case of Meghan Markle and Harry, look what it's done. Look what it's done. Prince Harry, someone that was a prince, that came from royalty, uh, married a nobody actress that nobody knew about, nobody cared about. She was not famous. She was not exactly very talented and artistic and like on the level of like, oh, like Meryl Streep or like Johnny Depp, like nobody cared about her. It was like a, 
uh, insignificant role she had on some dumb show in Canada and comes from a broken family, uh, inter interracial marriage, mother is black, father is white, the father is like, hill, you know, kind of like, I don't know if I want to use that word, but whatever it is, like hillbilly rednecks, and then the mother is like black, and it's just like, they should have never gotten together. And then therefore, Megan comes out, and Megan is already like confused about her, who she is. Am I black? Am I white? So all this, all those things, like it has like this ripple effect in our lives that even if it's not to us, even if Megan's mom and Megan's dad didn't really experience the ripple effect, now their daughter is, is experiencing because of what they did. Um, do I think like a black person and a white person shouldn't get married? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about marrying down. So don't twist my words and write some dumb racist comment in, in the comment section. I'm saying that if a black person and a white person want to get married, make sure that they're coming from a similar background of education, their morals, you know, um, what they believe in and having things like in common. And so there's not a, uh, such like a discrepancy in, in that where it's going to create chaos and discord. So that's the, the thought for today. That's the topic for today. Choose wisely and don't, um, use the narrative of, of these liberal Democrats that brainwash us to think like, you know, love is love and love is love. No, love is not love. And historically speaking, if you look back, you know, people a lot of times get married for other than just because I want to have sex with this person. Think bigger than that. Think, think outside, outside the box. Okay. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's topic and today's coffee morning vlog. Thank you for being here. I hope you guys give this video a like and consider subscribing. If you guys like content like that, I just want to do my chit chat videos here and express my thoughts and opinions and maybe it can help someone. I open the floor to you guys if you guys want to share your stories and if you want to, you know, um, yeah, share your stories and, and comment down below so we can be engaged and help each other. Uh, like I said, for people that cannot afford to come to me in a one-on-one -on -one for coaching, maybe this can be a platform that can help you guys in some shape or form. Again, if you guys are interested in my makeup um, and you guys want to get this look, everything's going to be in the description in the description box down below about how I achieved this look. And you can go to elliarkashop.com to purchase it. If you guys do want to come to me for coaching, if you guys do want to come to me for spiritual therapy and energy reading and readings and all that, <clears throat> go to elliarkashop.com slash services. And I will see you guys tomorrow morning for another coffee morning vlog.